What's good, YouTube? Welcome back, and happy 4th of July to all the Americans out there. And if you're not an American, cringe, I guess. Uh, but anyway, today's also a special day because we're going to be bringing you the top 8 deck lists from the latest Edison format, WCQ. This was a, uh, a multi-day event stretched out over like three weeks to a month or so, so obviously there was no like stream coverage or anything for that. I'll probably go over the top 8 gameplay in a separate video because the replays are all saved from that. But anyway, let's just get into it and start looking at the deck list. This is my first time actually looking at these, so we're gonna be we're gonna be checking them out. Um, starting off with the list that made uh, top eight, we got Silchus Ruin here. Actually, uh, classic Silchus bringing his hero zombie build. Um, a good few of these zombie hero hybrid variants have been doing pretty well lately i'm wondering if this might catch on as like the new uh definitive build of the of the zombie deck there's been a lot of builds over the past year or so we've had the you know we've had well -Adad, we've had instant fusion we've had standard diva zombies um and now we have this one uh that's been popping off a good bit lately so silks on one miracle fusion so not maxed out on this maybe like some other people it is on the gold sarks um He's got, of course, the Dark Greffer with the Mallies. I really like the hero package here uh, with the Future Fusion, the Stratos, the Prodigy, and the two Mallies. I think it is very, um, very slim enough, but just just right. Just has all the all the correct notes for the zombie deck there. And then one, three Divas, three Pyramid Turtles. Turtle, I think, is just a better recruiter than Tomato, so I kind of like just maxing out on this guy. Plus, he's a zombie for your Book of Life Mizuki zombie master plays I mean, turtle is just like the best possible recruiter in every way in the zombie deck so i think maxing out on him is definitely the correct choice we got the dark arm dragon double caius only on two we're not on any instant fusion shenanigans so enabling it isn't quite as easy and then a return from the different dimension standard spell trap lineup i think it's a really good uh list of the zombie deck and i'm excited to see if the the hero version really starts to catch on as the the definitive build so congratulations to silchus Silchus, of course, uh, one of the OG greats of Edison format, always playing these. Uh, he used to play Diva Hero, actually, but nowadays he more so plays Diva Zombies. But really good player. Good job to him. Next up, we have Rykoko, another very good uh, player making top eight here. Uh, this time playing Christia Sworn, actually, which um, I don't know if I've seen Rykoko play Christia Sworn before. Maybe I have. Uh, it's possible. So his build is on double hamster and double christia and double celestia so going with a lot of two offs on these ratios then we got max out raiko lila of course gotta have all that spell trap hate uh, he has a necro gardena in here which is something that i really like um i feel like the christia sworn standard builds don't often play this oh no he's also playing wolf actually that's crazy i didn't even see that at first but yeah wolf is something you don't usually see in uh in a lot of classic christia sworn builds at least at this point in edison format and one of the big things with playing Christia Sworn is it feels like you don't get enough value out of your mills sometimes. Um, but this build is trying to kind of like um, connect the this sort of value you get from the mills in the standard Light Sworn build to the crazy boss monster Beckoning Light plays that you have in the Christia Sworn build. Trying to have them both at once, essentially, with the Wolves and the Gardna and the Plague Spreader all in here in the Christia Sworn build. So only on two Christia. Actually, the fairy lineup is quite light if you look at it. Two Christia, one Shire. Three Heralds, only two Celestia, and then two Honest. So that's like, what, four, eight, ten fairies? That is a really low fairy count for a deck playing Herald of Orange Light. Although, I guess you have triple Beckoning. So just maxed out on Beckoning to try and set up your hands uh, as, to be as good as possible. Also on Cold Wave in here as well. Another one you don't usually see in Christia Sworn. Um, so Cold Wave and Storm having both of the sweepers, really prioritizing that um, makes sense. Of course, when you're maxing out on Beckoning Light, you're kind of, kind of just like shooting for the moon here, uh, which definitely seemed to work out for him because he ended up making it to top cut. Uh, one T-Roar, one Mirror Force, and one Dust Shoot. Actually on 41, apparently. Um, definitely a, an unusual one. The extra deck, of course, I mean, it's just a bunch of things you make with Plague Spreader. Some of these probably don't come up too much. Um, you know, I think, uh, can you even make Avenging Knight? This was probably just a carryover for when Soul of Purity was in the deck or something, and then it got left in there. Um, but, you know, usually you're just using Plague to make, like, Brionic or something, so it's whatever. All right, cool build by Rakoko. Uh, interesting take on Christia Sworn. Next up we have uh, we have Hero Frogs. Uh, I think this was the only frog deck to make top cut. It really, when I was looking at it earlier, glossing over, it looked like Vayu Turbo completely dominated 
Um, but we'll get we'll get to that. Not exactly new uh, information for this year. Value Turbo has been killing it, but we'll we'll talk about Value Turbo when we get to Value Turbo. Right now we are on Hero Frogs. Um, I really like to see Triple Geki break. I think this card is should just be maxed out on in most frog builds. Honestly, at this point, I also really like the Upstart Goblins. I think a lot of people have been messing around with this card. Uh, I think I actually prefer this card to playing um, like Jar of Greed and stuff. I think Upstart is actually sort of slept on in a lot of contexts. Um, and Frogs, the cool thing about it too, is you do your full substitute play and then you get like extra value out of the Upstarts in terms of the consistency um, because you're, you've thinned your deck for a bunch of cards. Uh, other than that, monster lineup, really standard. Two Fader, one Ryza, one Junkseeker on Triple Kaius, uh, the, what is it, just the four heroes, so no Alias, I guess, and the Unifrog uh, with Ecall, Rota, one for one, Brain, Heavy, Typhoon, Miracle Fusions, pretty standard spell lineup, I guess, only on one Econ and no Solexes, and maybe less room because of the upstarts and stuff. Actually, interesting to see no Mirror Force or Torrential Tribute anywhere in the 55. That is definitely... Definitely a bit strange, I would say, for uh, for frogs. Um, and the side, we have some interesting choices. So the alias is in the side. I actually kind of like that. Like, you just bring it in post-board to, to beat over dinas and stuff. I think that's a, that's a neat choice. Um, and then triple crow, triple vanity is pretty standard. We got uh, some soul X's to out things. We got a super poly thrown in here. No raptness, though. No Gemini hate. No one even plays Gemini anymore, so I guess it's, it kind of makes sense. Just for the hero beat matchup, maybe, or, or, the, or the mirror. Or the mirror. Um, and we got one D prison. 1D Prison over Mirror Force. Um, maybe, maybe just, I guess, playing around Road. D Prison can contextually be better than Mirror Force, too, if it's against, like, a Goblin Zombie, or maybe if you just really want to banish a Blackwing Monster or a Hero or something so they don't have Grave set up. Thus, Tornadoes, of course, always got to have those. And then Karma Cut. Just one Karma Cut? There are, like, matchups where Karma Cut is pretty good, right? Um, it's good against, like, Machina. It's good against the Frog Mirror. Again, you can just banish all the Treeborns. I'm actually surprised more people don't play Karma Cut just to, like, try to banish all the Treeborns because I feel like it's one of the best ways to do it. Um, like, it's probably better than, like, Kaiku and, and Soul Release, honestly. Maybe that's a stretch to say, but, like, Soul Release, you're just taking a straight neg. I guess Karma Cut is a neg, too, but usually you're pitching something, like, where you get value. And then, like, Kaiku just never connects, right? But Karma Cut, actually... Karma Cut might just be a, a, a good side deck card in this format. We'll see. Moving on, we got uh, a 43-card Gladiator Beast list. This deck definitely showing some signs of life. I think this is the third top for Gladiator Beasts in 2024. Is it the third? I might not have that number right. I think it's the third. I think it's the third, but I could be wrong. I could. There could be some small events I'm forgetting. In terms of large events, I think it's the third, though. Uh, so we got, I don't know, pretty standard Glad Beast line i don't know what the ratios are on all these guys on it usually it's like one of this i guess maybe two ready are in the main is a little odd usually you side the second one or something uh one hedge guard and then we've got quite an assortment of uh of spell traps which is kind of the thing with glads is you always got to play all these like weird just random spell trap cards and hope you draw the right ones at the right time uh so we got torrential mirror dust shoot solemn of course all the good ones only double war chariot i feel like everyone's only playing double war chariot uh, which is i don't know i've never i'm not a glad beast like expert obviously we all know how much i hate this deck but um i feel like three i would just if i played it i would play three because i feel like the deck is so much stronger when you open it than when you don't obviously you can recycle it over and over again but that's just always been my take on it actually triple waboku in here so a lot of wabokus uh, we got one traps done one dust tornado cold wave heavy storm so like a lot of spell trap hate in the main deck here um and then a gores as well uh, and then i guess we're on the rescue cat version with the test tigers and the prismas um so yeah um that's uh that's the gladiator beast build the gladiator beast builds that have been topping have kind of been all over the map there's like the spiral version and then there's this build i don't remember what the other one looked like i'd have to go back and check it but uh yeah gladiator beasts definitely doing a lot better in 2024 than they did uh in 2023 uh, next up we have, now we are getting to the Vayu section. Um, I think there were three Vayus in top eight. Vayu really killed it at this event, um, which, you know, we put at the top of our tier list. So once again, I'm being proven correct. What can I say? I'm just always right and very smart. Of the Vayu list that did top, I think one this one may be the weirdest, although they're not that different. 
Um, I guess only two Sirocco, no charge, and like main deck deck dev are the weird things that stand out. Also, fully maxed out on Caius is three of them. Um, uh, and the Spirit Reaper in the main deck as well. This is this the whole build looks actually very, very 10 FD pilled, although I don't think 10 FD would play DDB. Um, Return from the Different Dimension, of course, is showing up at all the value builds lately. Uh, I think you just got to play it. In testing, you know, against Vayu, I feel like this card just wins a lot of random games. Uh, RFDD is just such a crazy powerful card. Um, one of the strongest cards in the entire format. So if you're playing a deck that can abuse it, I think you're basically obligated to do so. Because it will just win you games. Um, the trap lineup looking pretty standard. The spell lineup pretty standard outside of the absence of charge. Um, we already talked about the monster lineup a little bit. Uh, the, the side and extra. We got no Fortress Dragon, which I, I guess a lot of Vayu players have been doing that for a while now also what is going on with the you just siding a riza what huh there's four monarchs in the in the in the 55 here kind of wild both oppressions in the side second ddv in the side we got a seven tools with three dust tornadoes so once again a lot of spell trap hate um and then the dinos of course also a mind control for uh for potentially a mirror match or another Ryko hamster matchup so that's uh mercenaries value deck next up we have evolutions value deck um a little more normal i guess we got the charge there we got one main deck oppression which seems to be the standard ratio uh none of the spirit reaper or whatever it's just one hamster triple raiko only two caiuses the three sirocco's pretty much pretty much normal value stuff at this point two prison two bottomless i guess one dust tornado over the third prison or whatever would potentially go in this slot so once again it's value turbo yeah no no value players play fortress dragon or sidra I don't really know why. I've never actually... Is it just because the extra deck is crowded? Is that... Yeah, I'm, I've never actually heard an answer to that. I'm sure there is a reason. But, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty standard value list. Uh, no, uh, no surprise seeing this deck perform so well, of course. Like we said, number one on the tier list. Probably, probably the best in the format right now. Next up, we have Masha, the one and only Blackwing list to make it into the top eight. Masha, of course... Uh, uh, we, we all love Masha here. She's got her own YouTube channel. Definitely a uh, shout out to Masha. Go over and subscribe to her. She makes good videos. I think she did, in fact, make a video on this very deck that she got to second place with. Um, so let's take a look at it. Only on one Vayu. That is definitely a little bit odd these days. Most builds have two. We are doing the six draw card lineup, but with upstarts over the Jar of Greed. I definitely like that. Talked about that a little bit earlier. Only two Icarus. I also like this. I feel like three of this is too bricky um is this like after you resolve one you're not usually resolving another immediately after either so i think two acres is actually a, a pretty solid ratio i wish more people did it um one oppression in the main mirror solemn uh dust shoot and then we got the bottom was we got the d prisons we got the standard spell lineup and of course everything else is just three offs and dad um so yeah i like i like masha's build a lot i think it's pretty solid um but you know it is just black wings not a whole lot to say about it deck usually has a uh, at least one in one in the top cut so not shocking to see black wings take second and first we have shamwell with the final value list let's take a look at shamwell's build shamwell the only one here that plays sork i definitely think sork is pretty good um in value turbo so glad to see shamwell on it he's also on one icarus attack which is pretty unusual both oppressions in the side looks like icarus attack potentially taking the spot of that one main deck oppression there um i think dimitri did this too or something at his worlds list was it last year uh, was he on was he on i think he was on just one icarus attack so shamwell taking some of that technology and winning first place for himself very impressive the rest of the monster lineup looks pretty normal we got three sorakos two at each of these guys we got the, the same three raiko one hamster two caius ratios going on there also on the return from the different dimension i think they were all on return from the different dimension everyone's just we all agreed that return from the different dimension is the way to go, right? And I think they were all also on Necrogardna. So, uh, yeah, everyone agrees. Return, Necrogardna. I also think Charge Sork. I think just these four should be in every value list. You need to have that uh, that high roll potential of playing those cards. But, uh, yeah, that's Shamwell's first place list. Vayu absolutely dominating this event. Congrats to Shamwell. Congrats to all the top eight uh, players. And uh, I think that's about all we've got for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed uh glad as always to go over these top eight lists with you let me know what you thought in the comments section thumbs up the video i will see you in the next one peace out